he was born. But God was working towards something. Thank God that he suffered what he suffered. But God was working towards something. Thank God he went to the cross. But it was because God was working towards something. Thank God he died. But God had something in mind. Thank God he was buried. Thank God he descended into hell and satisfied the claims of justice. Thank God he rose from the dead. And not only that, thank God he ascended to heaven. But all of that was because God was walking towards something. What was he walking towards? In verse 14, so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ and so that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. That's what God was working towards. God was working towards sanctifying, cleansing us to become the righteousness of God in Christ for a purpose so that we can become God's house address. God wanted to live inside of us. The coming of the Holy Ghost to dwell on our inside is what God was after. In the Garden of Eden, Satan came when God was out there. But now, when Satan comes to your garden, he will meet God inside when he knocks on the door. The person that will say to him, hello, who is it, will be God himself. So Satan cannot take God by surprise in your life ever again. Because when it comes, he will meet God there. I speak over your life. God make you as Ephraim and Manasseh. But God set you as Ephraim over Manasseh. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's something that happened here. The younger one was supposed to receive the blessing of the younger. And the older one was supposed to receive the blessing of the older. Now the right hand in the old covenant was always referred to as the hand of strength. It was a hand that carried the blessing of the firstborn and the blessing of the firstborn was always a double portion. Praise the Lord. So when Joseph was coming to Jacob, Joseph ensured that the firstborn was on his left hand and the secondborn was on his own right hand so that that firstborn was, would be on the father's right hand and the secondborn would be on the father's left hand. That way, Jacob will lay his hands like that. And his right hand will be on the head of Manasseh. And his left hand will be on the head of Ephraim. But heaven said no. Heaven said no. The young one doesn't seem to deserve it. The young one is not the one that tradition says should receive it. The young one is not the one that the application said should receive it. The young one is not the one that the committee agreed should receive it. But God crossed his hand to move him from where he was to where he was not qualified to be. That's the essence of the cross. The cross is God's divine arrangement, is God's divine verdict on somebody in this service today to move you from where you are now that you were confined to, limited to, determined to be over to where God wants you to be. Even though you don't qualify for it. The crossing of the hand is the intervention of Jehovah. To confer upon a man, a woman, the favor that takes you beyond your qualification. God has crossed his hand concerning your matter. I said God has crossed his hand concerning your matter. The right hand of God is coming upon your head now. He crossed his hand and put his right hand on the head of Ephraim. So he will move Ephraim to the place that is right. His right hand makes it right for you. The right opportunities are coming to you. 
the right experiences are coming to you. The right victories are coming to you. The right breakthroughs are coming to you. The right experiences are coming to you. You don't think it is going to happen, but God has thought it through and he has crossed his hand. Is somebody in this house listening? God has determined, I will give them what they do not deserve. Jesus paid the price for you and he has made you a recipient of what you do not deserve. Now, this must give us an insight into what God is thinking about us because the cross is all about us. Hallelujah. God has crossed his hand. The second has become the first. And it is not because of what you have done. It's not because of your smartness. It's because of what Jesus has done. God has put you in a position now by the crossing of his hand to qualify you. You are not next in line but you are going to be the first in line. Yeah. I said, I'm seeing my God crossing his hand over your matter. Yeah. God is moving you from the back to the front. Yeah. God is taking the disqualified and making them qualified. Yeah. Suddenly, there is a change taking place, somebody. Yeah. God is taking you from dishonor and rejection into honor and acceptance. Yeah. He has crossed his hand over your matter. They said you will not amount to much. You will become the reference point in your family. They said that business will not work, but it will begin to flourish and prosper because God has crossed his hand. Can somebody say amen? He is putting you at the right place. He is positioning you at the right time. He is orchestrating your meeting with the right people. He has crossed his hand. By the crossing of his hand, God has brought favor into your life. The cross is for your favor. Say the cross is for my favor. Come on, say it three times. The cross is for my favor. Yes, by the... That's right, say it again. By the cross, God crossed you from darkness to light. The Bible says in Christ we are translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And that was by the cross... By the cross, the evil that was written against you has been blotted away. By the cross, you have been moved from the back to the front. By the cross, you have been taken away from rejection to acceptance. By the cross, failure is a thing of the past. You are now an outstanding success. By the cross, sickness is over. It's time to walk in divine healing and wholeness. You were told it is not possible. The cross has made it possible. You have crossed from unbelief to doubt by the cross. God has crossed his hand to move you from unbelief to doubt, from, from unbelief to faith, from doubt to single-mindedness. By the cross, pain has given way to peace. By the cross, he that was not smart enough, that was not educated enough, that was not connected enough, that was not fast enough, God has lifted that young woman that man and taking him and plunged him to the front. He has crossed his hand. When God crosses his hand, it means that what you could not do for yourself, God is beginning to do it for you. Is somebody in this house listening? Say, my father, cross, thank you for crossing your hands to do for me what I cannot do for myself in the name of Jesus. To give you a place you do not deserve. You know the Bible says. Why we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. He came anyway. Even though we didn't earn it. We didn't deserve it. He did it anyway. Why? God crossed his hand. This is the victory of the cross. That's why I came to announce today. The cross. Is your crossover. The cross is your crossover. Yeah. Weeping has endured for a night, but joy has come on this resurrection morning. I said joy has come on this resurrection morning. Yeah. Enough of weeping is time for laughter. Yeah. Enough of sorrow is time for rejoicing. Yeah. Enough of backwardness is time to move to the front. Yeah. Enough of being looked down on is time to be looked up to. God has crossed his hand. He has crossed his hand. The power of the resurrection is released. 
to take you to where you're supposed to be. Every power that has been restricting you, resisting you, and hindering you, by the crossing of God's hands, you are crossing them over. And you are crushing those powers in the name of Jesus. You know, in verse number 17, something very strange happened, but it's, it mirrors what happens to us in our practical experiences on a day-to-day -day basis. In verse number 17, the Bible says, And when Joseph saw that his, father's, his father laid his hands upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him, and he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And the father of Joseph said unto him, No. There are powers saying, No, don't come to the cross. Don't enter into your cross experience. They are saying it. Don't enter into your cross experience. Don't come to the cross. But that is too late. He has already crossed his hand. It's too late. He has already crossed his hand. People will say, no, he doesn't deserve it. But it's not because you deserve it. It's because he has crossed his hand. They say he shouldn't have the promotion. It's not because you deserve the promotion. It's because God has crossed his hand. He made up his mind to do it. Jesus is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. That's why God is not afraid that you will fail. He concluded it before the world began. God is not afraid that you will die of that condition. It was settled before the world began. The cross physically was simply a manifestation, an implementation of something that was already settled in the realm of the spirit. Your destiny will flourish. Your destiny will manifest. You will pass that examination. You will graduate with flying colors. That business will pick up. It will flourish. You will shake your world. You will make impact in your generation. Because he has crossed his hand. Honor God. Do your best. Release your faith. Make sure you live a prayerful life. Make sure you do and operate the principle of the scriptures. When you have done your best, remember, it is because he crossed his hand. In my Can somebody say amen? Many tribulations and trials tried to weigh me down. But I Moses said, I cannot do it. God said, don't worry, I've crossed my hand. Egypt will bow under your instance. Can somebody say amen? What would have taken 40 years, God will do it in four hours. God will do it in four days. God will do it in four weeks. God will do it in four months. Because he has crossed his hand. You have been waiting all these years and saying, Oh God, when will this happen? When will this happen? When will this happen? He sent me this morning to announce to you, I have crossed my hand. Concerning your case. The Bible says, a day with the Lord is like a thousand years. But that's not the end of the story. There's another side of God. He says, but a thousand years can also be like one day. Which means if I can stretch one day into a thousand years, I can also compress a thousand years into one day. That's what God said as he come and tell you. I have crossed my hand. What would have taken your lifetime will happen this year. Amen. I have crossed my hand. The marriage they said cannot happen. It's going to happen this year. Amen. I have crossed my hand. You that was told you cannot have children, you are going to carry twins this year. Amen. I have crossed my hand. You that they said you are inconsequential and nothing good is coming out of your life, you are going to lead a company that will, that will, that will receive and that will employ hundreds of thousands of people. Everyone has been magnifying your weaknesses. In spite of your weaknesses, God has crossed his hand. Amen. His power will subsume your weakness. Amen. And release you into manifestations. Amen. That marriage will flourish again. Yes. Those children will come back again. Amen. And they will serve Jesus. Can somebody say amen in this house? Amen. Gideon was threshing wheat on the ground when an angel appeared to him and said, Thou mighty man of God. He said, What? Look at where you met me and you are calling me a mighty man of valor. And that angel said, Gideon, you are not a mighty man of valor because of your personal accomplishments, your strengths, or your prowess. It's because God has crossed his hand. He has chosen to use you.
Can somebody say amen? A young orphan girl called Esther. God crossed his hand over Esther and put his hand on her head. The Bible says a woman who was very pretty by the name of Vashti lost her throne. Because God crossed his hand and put his hand upon Esther. Somebody is about to assume his throne, her throne this morning. Amen. Because your God has crossed his hand. Yes. Say, my father, my head, receive your hand. My head, receive your Say, hand. Say, my father, my father, my head, receive your hand. My head, receive your hand. Yes, 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 cross his hand. Yes, cross his hand over yes. your head. Yes. That your head is a hand of destiny. Amen. It's a head of breakthrough. Amen. It's a head of promotion. Amen. A head of acceleration. Amen. He's moving you further yes. and faster. Yes, yes. His hand is upon you. Amen. You are not going to remain where you are. Amen. God has crossed his head. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The young man called David was in the bush. Even his father forgot him when it was time to assume the throne. But God's hands are long enough. His hand bypassed everyone else and went into the bush and rested on David. Are you listening somebody? God has crossed his hand. You have been behind the bushes. You have been serving God faithfully. Nobody has taken note of you. You have been hidden somewhere. Somebody asked me one. He said, where is this church called the hilltop in Podakot? Ladies and gentlemen, there are many people looking for the hilltop. Somebody said to Dr. Stephanie, it is very difficult to find your church. But I came to tell the hilltop today, God has crossed his hand. Amen. I stand on the altar of this same hilltop. Yes, sir. The city set on an hill. Your days of hiding are over. Amen. Hilltop, your days of hiding are over. Amen. Your days where people are looking for you, they are over. Amen. I declare the power of visibility. Yes. I declare the power of visibility. Yes. Oh, God is taking you from the back and putting you in front. Amen. From hiding to prominence and visibility. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Because Hilltop, hear me and hear me well. God has crossed his hand yes. upon the hilltop. Jesus. They say, who do you think you are? When he crosses his hand upon you, you take your place on the throne to begin to reign. Is somebody listening here? Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. This is very outstanding. Go with me to Colossians chapter 2. That's my concluding scripture. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2 from verse 13 to 15. Colossians 2. Let's begin from verse 13. Are you there? And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, had he quickened together with him, with Jesus, having forgiven you all trespasses. Say thank you, Jesus. Come on, say thank you, Jesus. You are forgiven, not because of your strength, but because of what he did. Huh? Go to the next verse. Blotting out the what? Handwriting of ordinances. That was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Now look at this. This is a consequence. Having spoiled. Kabondo Goriatis. Having spoiled. Disgraced, disappointed, dematerialized, dissembled, destroyed. Diffused, disarmed principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Hallelujah! When Jesus died on the cross, all our sins and iniquities were dealt with, which means the legal basis for satanic dominion is broken. Satan has no power over you except through sin. But now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 says, in fact verse 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. 
all things are passed away behold in case you are doubting it he says behold see it now all things have become new the bible says that we are not sufficient in ourselves but jesus has become our sufficiency and we have become the righteousness of god in christ because we have the righteousness of god satan does not have the power over us anymore hallelujah now go back to verse number 14 i want to show you something there before i get done powerful having wiped out i'm reading new king james version i think colossians the same colossians having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us which was contrary to us and has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Hallelujah. The handwriting, that word handwriting, the Greek word karyographon, it means all legal documents that were handwritten. The memorandum of understanding, the legal documents written and documented against you. Are you listening? It says the handwriting of requirements. The word requirement, the Greek word dogma. You have heard of dogma. There's somebody is dogmatic. That word dogma is, is the Greek word for law. So the handwritten legal things written against us. The sacrifice of Jesus took it away. That means you did it. You are guilty as charged. So it's documented in the Universal Court of Justice. This one needs to be promised, needs to be punished. But the Bible says even the captive of the mighty and the prey of the terrible can be delivered. Jesus has paid the price for your freedom. But if that was all, it would have been enough. But there's still more. He says... The handwriting of ordinances, which were what? Contrary to us. Contrary to us. Contrary to us. Eupenantius in the Greek. That word contrary means to be covertly contrary. You didn't get me. You didn't get me. We have dealt with the open ones. For something to be covert means it is not overt. For something to be covered means it is not open. It is secret. Okay, let's put it this way. It is covered means you don't know about it, even though it exists. Are you listening, somebody? That means maybe it is not what you did. Maybe it is what your father did, and he didn't tell you that he did it. Maybe it is what your grandfather did. And you are not aware it was done. But it is there secretly in the books of the courts of justice. And it is being invoked by the accuser of the brethren against you. But the Bible says now is come salvation. And strength. And the kingdom of our God. And the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren. He has been cast down. Which accused the brethren before God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. Hallelujah. They are contrary to us. They are hidden, secret, unknown. They are in your bloodline. It's there, exacting against you. Hindering your progress. Limiting your advancement. Pulling you down. Holding you down from rising. But today, I came to announce it has been nailed to the cross. <laughs> I said it has been nailed to the cross. The nail that entered into the hands of Jesus and his feet nailed it to the cross. Every power that has been tying you down from your past, I declare, receive that nail. I said God has nailed them. God brought you to this service to nail them practically. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That's why I told you at the beginning of the service, 
pray that what the cross achieved to become a practical reality in your life. Many tribulations and trials tried to weigh me down. But I heard a word, a rainbow word, that I will. Every strike that Jesus received, every wound that he received, happened for our transgression. To transgress means to misbehave. This is the rule. You break the rule. He was bruised. A bruise is a closed wound. You can see the swelling of the bruise, but it's not open. That means the issues that you are not aware of their secret. He has taken care of it. His wounds has dealt with the overground problems that you can see visible. But his bruises has dealt with the underground issues. They were in the secret making invocations against you. That this one will not amount to anything. Oh mini bomb. This one will not increase. Oh mini bomb. This one will not succeed. Underground, you are not aware. They were doing it in the covens. But there is somebody who was bruised. Jesus was bruised. He was bruised. So that everything that you are not even aware of will be dealt with. The problem is underground. The solution is underground. Wherever they are, the Lord meets them there. Order for this message, please request for the message number above. You can also request for other messages by Reverend Chris Oare when you call 084-779-290-0803-182-6714-0803-182-6712 or 0803-182-6702. For more details about Reverend Chris Oare, the Hilltop International Christian Center and other products and programs, please visit our website www.hilltopinternational.org